This video is brought to you by Clean My Mac. This is the Apple ecosystem, at least the essential pieces of it. In front of me, I have eight of the latest entry-level Apple devices, which combined cost less than the price of a base 16-inch MacBook Pro. The goal for this video is to showcase how these products talk to each other, and in doing so, to better understand what makes the Apple ecosystem so compelling. You see, on their own, none of these devices might seem all that special. But once they start talking to each other, things get really interesting. But before I dive into specifics, there is one invisible player worth calling out. That is iCloud. Even if you're not using the file storage through iCloud Drive, it is still the backbone of the entire ecosystem experience, and I'll be sure to show you how it quietly keeps everything connected. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe, because why not? So, allow me to begin with the iPhone, the central nervous system of this whole operation. When it's paired with a Mac or an iPad, incoming calls show up instantly across all devices. That same integration extends to FaceTime. You can begin a call on your iPhone and pass it off mid-conversation to, let's say, your Mac or iPad. You can transfer a phone call directly from the iPhone to the living room on the Apple TV, so you can actually enjoy a much more immersive family experience. Well, hello there. Text messages are synced across as well, no matter if they are iMessage or SMS, allowing you to reply directly from your Mac or iPad without even reaching for the iPhone. And Wi-Fi calling takes things a step further, letting your iPad or Mac place calls using your iPhone's cellular connection, even if your phone is in another room. Now, another cool feature that some people can enjoy is iPhone mirroring. And this is something that allows you to control the iPhone regardless of where it is around your house. But unfortunately, oops, unfortunately, it doesn't work in the European Union. Then there's AirDrop, the feature just about everyone knows about. It lets you wirelessly send photos, files, or links between your iPhone and other Apple devices, all end-to-end -end encrypted. Nowadays, things work even from a distance, by the way. But it's universal clipboard that still feels like magic. Copy text, an image, or even a file from your iPhone and paste it straight into an app on your Mac iPad. And if you spend a little bit of time, you can master the shortcuts or the gestures that you can apply to speed things up a lot. For example, you can use the three finger gesture to grab something and paste it on another device. Handoff is yet another key piece of this puzzle. It's what lets your workflow move fluidly between devices. I can start writing an email on my iPhone, then simply bring the cursor to the mail icon on my Mac's dock and pick up right where I left off. It works just as well in Safari and even third-party applications. In the meantime, Safari is carrying over your browsing history and even open tabs. Entertainment-wise, the iPhone steps in as a remote for the Apple TV or a source for AirPlay, streaming music to a Mac, HomePod, or even mirroring Netflix to the big screen. The reason I mentioned the iPhone is the backbone of this whole operation is because it is also an authenticator for the Mac purchases and even security prompts, or as a locator for missing things like the Apple Watch or a backpack carrying an AirTag. Note that I'm not diving into HomeKit automations or smart appliances here, or the fact that the iPhone is also the essential health and wellness keeper. I just won't have the time for all that. Now, since my iPad doesn't have LTE, the iPhone doubles as a personal hotspot, offering instant internet access, not just to the iPad, but to my Mac as well. This is perhaps one of my all-time favorite features that gives me a huge peace of mind when traveling. Oh, and whenever someone is visiting the studio, I can simply share my Wi-Fi password to their iPhone without even having to spell it out. In fact, it remains invisible. If that's not enough, if I tell my Apple Watch, turn on Do Not Disturb, 
the focus mode change will echo across all the devices. And if you are a parent or just someone trying to manage screen time across devices, screen time syncing is quietly powerful. I can set app limits or downtime from the iPhone and those rules apply to the iPad and the Mac. Combine that with family sharing and it becomes a simple way to keep track of how the devices in the home are being used without micromanaging every little setting. Now, when it comes to the Mac's role in the ecosystem, the story is just as versatile. Real-time document syncing means I can be editing a file in pages on the iPad and watch the changes appear instantly on the Mac or vice versa. And thanks to the shared clipboard, copy-pasting between the iPhone, iPad, and Mac feels completely natural. No airdrop, no emailing files to yourself, just copy here and paste there. The new Apple Passwords app adds another layer of simplicity. It stays in sync across all devices by default, so if I save a password or login on my Mac, it's instantly available everywhere else. Keeping this baseline Mac Mini tip-top shape, by the way, happens with the help of Clean My Mac, a 5-in-1 Mac Care tool that declutters this little guy, keeping it running like new. The sleek dashboard and smart care give me a complete system checkup for junk files, potential threats, and system clutter, rounding up everything and showing exactly what I can get rid of. As I work with many and large files, my clutter is a feature I rely on a lot too. The visual breakdown helps me instantly find duplicates and what's taking up space. And in the meantime, with the assistant and menu app, I can monitor the most important system metrics and even run internet speed tests on the fly. My favorite feature of Clean My Mac though is the applications dashboard, which helps me update and most importantly, uninstall apps correctly scrubbing away all the leftovers. Clean My Mac was recently featured in the Mac App Store shortlist of the 25 best apps of 2025, and for a good reason. So hit the first link in the description below to try it for seven days and use my code thisiz 20 to get 20% off your plan. So from all the features on the Mac, the one that I find most fun in is Sidecar. It turns the iPad, even this iPad mini into a full-blown secondary display. Not just for mirroring, but for expanding your workspace with full Apple Pencil support if you need it. This is in fact something that I talk about in my portable desk setup travel episode, which I'll link at the end of this video. There, I also talk about universal control, which allows me to move the Mac's cursor straight into the iPad and basically control it with just one set of peripherals. I can even drag and drop files between the two to let's say finish a document that I'm working on. When it's time to get more hands-on, continuity camera lets the iPhone become a scanner where snapping a photo of a document instantly appears on the Mac as a PDF. And while editing a PDF, if I need to sign it, I can use continuity markup without even switching between apps. I can simply grab the iPhone or the iPad and use the touchscreen to annotate or sign it and those edits appear live on the Mac. So we all know how document annotations work, especially when it comes to screenshots. I grab a screenshot, I open it, I click on the annotate button, and I can try and draw something here. But instead, what I'll do is I'll move over to the iPad right away and use the pencil to make much more accurate annotations, which appear live as I draw them. How cool is that? I love this feature. And if you're in a meeting, you can use one of those MagSafe contraptions that can attach on the lip of, let's say, your MacBook and basically use the iPhone as a much better web camera than anything else that you can find around the house. It works very simple and seamless. Something that I'm genuinely missing when I switch to mechanical watches is auto unlock. You see, if I'm wearing the Apple Watch, I can simply wiggle to wake up the Mac and it unlocks instantly. No typing, no touch ID. It just knows it's me and I get a taptic feedback from the watch on the wrist. That same proximity magic also works for admin approval prompts, making it one tap authentication instead of a full password routine. The same unlocking power works on the iPhone, which can unlock the Apple Watch as soon as I authenticate with Face ID and vice versa. As expected with the Apple Watch, I can answer calls and even transfer them seamlessly between devices. But perhaps the most used and ironic feature here for me is finding my iPhone. On a more serious note, 
One Apple Watch feature I genuinely care about is fall detection. That's why I've made sure the people that I care about most are wearing one because if something happens, I'll be notified as an emergency contact. Now let's talk about the AirPods. As with all the Apple devices, syncing for the first time happens via proximity and it is super satisfying. Once connected to the iPhone, thanks to iCloud, they become accessible across all my devices. And whether I'm using them with the iPhone or iPad, automatic context switching means they know where the attention is. So if I'm listening to music on a Mac and a call comes in on the iPhone, the audio pauses and the AirPods switch over to the iPhone automatically. And while watching something on the AirPods 4, spatial audio is measuring and adjusting according to my head movements to provide the ultimate immersive experience. Very nice. While on the topic of watching content, the Apple TV pairs beautifully with the iPhone, not just as a remote, but as a keyboard too, which makes typing in search fields far less painful. And if the iPhone is not nearby, the Apple Watch steps in as the cutest backup remote control. What's even more impressive is that the iPhone can also act as a calibration tool for the Apple TV, using its camera to fine tune the image for the best Apple TV picture profile. Once you have added your Apple TV to your home app, you can use the HomePods to turn on and off the Apple TV itself. Hey, boom. Turn on chill area TV. One feature that I didn't even know existed until recently is a multi-output audio. In my home studio, for example, I have two HomePods playing in sync with a projector acting as a central speaker. And it all just works. Because if there's any delay, a feature called wireless audio sync takes care of the lag. The intercom feature is also another cool thing to try at home. If you have HomePods around the house and everybody's spread around the home, you can just use the assistant to tell everyone that it's time for dinner. Intercom dinner time. Dinner time. Yeah. There's also something called universal purchase, which doesn't get talked about much, but makes a big difference. If I buy an app on the iPhone, it is often automatically available on the iPad and the Mac too. So no need to repurchase or worry about separate licenses. Same goes for purchasing one app on the Mac and let's say, use it on another Mac in the same iCloud account. As I mentioned in the beginning, iCloud is the glue that holds the entire Apple ecosystem together. It's what makes adding a new device feel effortless. Everything just syncs and setup is often as simple as getting the devices close to each other. No need to enter passwords like crazy. More importantly, iCloud is where all the devices are being backed up live. And that alone is a strong reason to consider paying for a storage tier, even if you're using another cloud service for let's say your regular data files. If your family is also deep into Apple devices, family sharing lets you extend that peace of mind as backup purchases and iCloud storage can be shared with up to five family members. iCloud also powers my Find My, which means I can locate or remotely erase a lost Mac, pinpoint my iPhone with precision finding, or even track down a misplaced backpack using a little AirTag. Now here's the ultimate ecosystem flex. I'm on a Mac mini and I'm running QuickTime where I'll start a new movie recording. But as a source, I will choose the screen of the Apple TV, which is way back there. And in a second, you'll see a yellow line around the TV itself, indicating that the screen recording is active. Now at this point, I'll use the iPhone as the remote for the Apple TV, which means I can move around and scroll and I can play something which will play here and I can just start recording it. How cool is that? And that's just scratching the surface from focus mode syncing and share passwords to iCloud photos, share albums, share play sessions, and beyond, iCloud is the invisible thread that makes it all feel like one connected experience. Even shortcuts are synced across all the devices. So if I have a shortcut that I have created for the iPhone, it might just as well work on let's say the Mac. So if I use my shortcut for volume, maxed out, boom, check it out, it's already maxed out. If I go to volume 50%, boom, 
A simple shortcut that allows me to instantly max out the iPhone 16 e's volume on the fly, something that I go step by step over in my ultimate iPhone home screen setup episode right here. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter and as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E. Over and out.